Good morning, good morning, good morning. For this is the day the Lord has made. Let us truly rejoice and be glad in it. For the Bible says, I was glad when it said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So right now, I want you to put some clapping in your hands, some dancing in your feet, and some shouting in your spirit. And come on and bless the Lord with me. on time, God. Yes, he is. Oh, on time, God. Yes, he is. Job said he may not come when you want him, but he children of Israel trapped at the Red Sea by that mean old Pharaoh and his army that had water all around them and Pharaoh at their back but God stepped in out of nowhere and built a highway just like that let me tell you he's an on time God oh yes he is Oh, on time, God, yes, he is. Job said he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. He's an on time, God, yes, he is. Verse 2, yeah, you can ask the 5,000 hungry soldiers fed. Two fish and five loaves of bread. What a miracle he performed for the multitude. What he did way back then, he can do for me and you. Let me tell you, he's an on time God. Oh, yes, he is. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Creator, from our Lord Jesus Christ, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, I greet all of you with the love of Jesus in my heart. All praise, all praise to the triune God. Amen, amen, and amen. We honor Pastor Cannon and Pastor Latson and other ministers who are present tonight, today, this morning, all of the saints at CN Jenkins and those who are joining us in this worship service. I'm glad to be in your presence one more time. Now, when you have been on this earth 71 years and been a Presbyterian pastor over 44 years, you're glad to be anywhere today. But I, I am especially glad to be with you this morning as we worship God in spirit and in truth. Prayerfully, I want to call your attention to two short verses of scripture that we will use as our text for today. 
And we ask that if you are reading in your Bible at home, that you pay attention as we read from God's Word. First of all, a verse from Mark, the 8th chapter, verse 31, the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, reads thusly. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days, rise again. Walk with me just a few verses, few verses later, to the Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2, verses 22 through 24, also the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, and you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But listen to this part. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. Dr. Cannon's sister Katie taught me a lot of things, but she taught me particularly when I preached the three B's, to be brief, to be specific, and then be seated. Amen, somebody. I'm going to do the best I can to honor that, but don't quite hold me to it all the way. The Spirit willing today, we're going to preach from this subject, you have a resurrection coming. Now, if you are at home or wherever you are worshiping with somebody else, tell them that, tell them that, tell them, tell them with emphasis, you have a resurrection coming. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you this morning that no matter what you are going through, the gospel is very clear. There's always something better on the horizon. In other words, there's always a good Friday lurking in our lives. But Easter Sunday is coming not too far behind. It happened to Jesus, y'all, and it happens to us. Now, as we know, Jesus was crucified at the hands of evil people. Jesus actually knew that his death was coming. He did not try to skirt around it or to get out of it. He faced it, y'all, with courage and convictions. He had foreknowledge of this, and he tried to give the disciples the insight into the same thing. But they did not yet comprehend what he was saying. Or they did not want to understand what he was saying. Y'all know people understand what they want to understand. When it's in our favor, we understand. But when it's not in our favor, we can get strangely ignorant, can't we, y'all? But Jesus tried to tell the disciples that he was going to be crucified. That was the bad news. But in the midst of the bad news, he also gave them some good news of the things that were to come. What is that good news? He was going to be raised from the dead by the hand of a loving God. And his proclamation came true. On the third day morning, as the text says, he was raised from the dead. He got up from the grave, y'all, 
he walked out of the tomb with all power in his hand. Good Friday put him in the grave, but Easter got him out of the grave. God's love would not let Jesus stay dead. He had been faithful unto death. That's why Revelation 2 and 10 says to us, be faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life. Jesus was faithful just like that. Good Friday put death in his life, but the resurrection put life back in his life. They put nails in his hands and feet. They pierced him in his side. They broke his bones to make sure that he was dead. They put a fake crown of thorns on his head. But listen to this. It was fake to them, but it was real to God. For a crown was a symbol of life. God knew that in spite of all Jesus went through, that he was going to live again. The grave could not hold him. Jesus could go through all he went through because he knew God would come through for him in the end. He knew, y'all, that he had a resurrection coming. Tell your worshipers again, you got a resurrection coming. His death and his resurrection is our assurance that we can get through anything that we go through in this life. Now think about it. Since God could bring Jesus back from the dead, then surely God can bring us back from the things we go through. That's why Paul could say in Romans 8, no, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. And then Paul gives us that famous list, and he gives us that list of the things that, that perplex us, and the first thing he talks about is death. Hallelujah, somebody. So and listen, if God can conquer death, then surely God can conquer what we go through from day to day. God can bring us back from the death-like situations we have in our life. Listen, some things won't kill us, but they'll sure make us feel like we did. Amen, somebody. Got bills and no money? That can be death-like. Got marriage and no love? That can be death-like. Got sickness and can't get well? That can be death-like. Got a family but no peace? That can be death-like. Got a friend who stabbed you in the back? That can be death-like. Got a life but no joy? That can be death-like. We sometimes have death-like experiences in our life that can make us feel just like we are dead. But I want you to know, God gave Jesus a third-day resurrection as God promised. And God has one for you and me. Better days are coming. Not just in the by and by, but maybe now, maybe tomorrow, or the next day, or at God's appointed time. God may not come when we want him, but I'm here to tell you God is always on time. God is always on time. Your resurrection is coming even though you have a good Friday that lasts longer than you want it to last. You have a resurrection coming in your life. As we move toward the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus then, let us be ever mindful that yes, we have a resurrection coming in spite of all that we may be going through right now. Let me lift up a couple of things that'll help us understand this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out your way. I was about to say I was gonna run by and give me some church's chicken, but I can't do that now. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Not right now, right now, maybe a little later on. Hallelujah, somebody. You have a resurrection coming first when you know that God has established your resurrection before anything even happens to you. Jesus was trying to give the disciples knowledge about his resurrection, but they couldn't get it. They only had less than three years with Jesus. This was new to them. They got it later on, but right now, y'all, they are just stumbling around in the dark. But listen to this. We've had over 2,000 years with what God did through Jesus. We have seen what God can do. We have seen God heal those we love. 
We have seen God bring people back together who were separated. We have seen God working in the church in the community. We have seen God change the course of human events. We have seen God even change people's heart. God will bring you through. Jesus knew this. It is time for us to know it too. There's nothing that you are going through that God cannot get you through. And if you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them right there. You have a resurrection coming when you know for sure that God would do it for you. God has done it before. And God will do it again. Jesus wanted his disciples to know it back then, and he wants us to know it today. You have a resurrection coming maybe, maybe sooner than you know. Know that God is for you. Know that the Lord will make a way somehow. Know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy, sweet joy, comes in the morning. You have a resurrection coming. Know that God has already made plans for it to happen. Secondly, you have a resurrection coming when you see Jesus as the way to your resurrection. His resurrection is our resurrection. Romans 6 and 8 says, if you have died with him, you shall also live with him. When you go down with Jesus, you will also get up with Jesus. When you are crucified with Jesus, you will also be raised with Jesus. Now, the problem with someone may be that you have not yet died with Jesus so that you cannot get up from your death-like situations in your life. You have some things living in your life that are not of Christ. Now, now let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just tell you about a few of them just in case you were wondering what they are. Malice, envy, jealousy, hatred, strife, arrogance, Prejudice, yeah. greed, yeah. impatience, yeah. worry, yeah. lust, and the like. When we die with Christ, everything that is not supposed to be there also dies with you. When you are raised with Christ, you come up new. That's why Paul said anyone in Christ is a new creation. All things have passed away and new things have come. Come on, John. John said, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The old passed away. The way to your resurrection is through the blood of the crucified Lord. He, listen, listen, listen. Now, this is a Larry Hill original. If anybody else claimed they said it, you tell them, no, you didn't. Larry said it first. Say amen, somebody. He got up one day so that you and I can get up every day. Come on, somebody. Jesus is the way, y'all. Come on, Andre Crouch. If you have some questions in the corners of your mind, traces of discouragement, the peace you cannot find, reflections of your past seem to face you every day. But this one thing I do know, Jesus is the way. Why? Because Jesus is the answer for the world today. And above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Yes, he is, church. He is the way out of your doubt. He's the way out of your distress. He's the way out of your discouragement. He's the way out of your defeat. He is even the way out of your death. The way to your resurrection is through the risen, reigning, and ruling Lord. One more little piece that I'm going to get out the way. You have a resurrection coming finally when you trust the process that God has put in place for your resurrection to take place. We hear a lot of that today, don't we? Trust the process. Well, listen, sometimes the process is the problem. Or the people in the process is the problem. The process may be good, but the people in the process is what makes it bad. But there's a process that we can get through the Bible for, of what God did so that we can get this resurrection that we want. And we got to stay within it. Watch what God is doing in your life. That's part of the process. What you're going through might just be the way God is getting you to what you're going to. For instance, Hank Aaron, whom we lost this year, 
went through a lot as a Major League Baseball player, but it got him to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Cecily Tyson, whom we also lost this year, had the same experience. She went through a lot, but she got to a respected career in performing and acting. Watch what God is doing in your life and make sure that you and God are on the same page. That's unbeatable. When you and God are on the same page, the world can't do you any harm. Why? Because God has your back. But while you're watching, learn how to wait on the Lord too. That's part of the process. And while you're waiting, I want you to know God's not idle. God is still working. There were three days between the crucifixion and the resurrection. During that time, God didn't just sit idly by. God went to work. And God assembled a stone remover to roll the stone from the entrance of the grave. God called on an angel to announce that the resurrection had taken place. God sent the women to hear and then go tell the good news. God summoned the disciples to witness to the resurrection. Jesus waited and God was working. That's why Isaiah the prophet can say, they who wait for the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Wait on God. Your resurrection is coming. While you're watching and waiting, I want you to get this. Don't stop worshiping. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, I'm so proud of those of us who have not stopped worshiping even though we're in the midst of this great pandemic. I know your pastor said that. I want to reinforce it. We know we're going to come back into church one day, but, but you don't have to be in church in a building. You don't have to be there to worship God. I suspect that some of you are just like me. I've had a worship experience while I was driving down the highway. I've had a worship experience at a ball game, the CIAA. I've had a worship experience with a fishing pole in my hand. You can worship God anytime and anywhere to get to your resurrection. Don't stop worshiping, whether inside the church building or somebody else. Come on, David. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually, continually be in my mouth. Pandemic or no pandemic, keep on worshiping until your resurrection has come. The process in a nutshell, watch, wait, and worship. Stay in the process. God put it in place. God's going to make a way out of no way. God's going to be your bridge over troubled water. God's going to be your shelter in the time of a storm. God's going to be with you till you got to take that mask off and you can shout all over God's church. Hallelujah, somebody. I got to be brief. I got to be specific now. I'm going to say this and I'm going to be seated like I promised. Don't get weary. This is the conclusion. Don't get weary about the worst in your life because with God, the best is yet to be. Yes, it is. Now, one of my favorite parts of the resurrection narrative is when those who were responsible for the crucifixion went home Friday night and they were thinking everything was all over. They beat their chest. Oh, we got him now. <laughs> He's done for. That old smart elect Jew, we have shut him up. We have extinguished his fire. They were going home and saying, it's all over now. Mm -hmm. But how many out there know it was not all over? For those who believe and trusted in God, the best was yet to come. Good Friday has to get out of the way and allow Easter to take center stage. There is no Easter without Good Friday, but Easter is coming no matter how long Good Friday lasts. The text says because it was impossible for him to be held within its power. They killed Jesus, but they could not stop his resurrection. What I've tried to say today, these three things. When you know God has made provision for your resurrection, when you see Jesus as the way to your resurrection, and when you trust God's promise of watching, waiting, and worshiping, you have a resurrection coming, and nothing will be able to stop it. No pain, no problem, 
no power, no pestilence, and no pandemic. God said it would happen. That's good enough for me. What about you? You have a resurrection coming. Get ready. My friends, we thank you so much for joining us today. I've asked Dr. Hill to give us a word, a benediction, and praise. And then we're going to go out as we already have been into the world sharing God's love. Dr. Hill. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance upon you. God make God's face shine upon you. God give you peace from this day forward and forevermore. Amen.